Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for November 14th, 2014. I'm into my last week of live events here in Canada. I will be doing live presentations in Calgary, Vancouver, and Surrey this week. Calgary Monday and Tuesday, Vancouver on Wednesday, Surrey on Thursday. These are free to attend, sponsored by Disnat. The address to register is on screen, or you can just go to the Stock Scores homepage. There's a link in the upper right hand corner. All right, let's talk about a concept called mean reversion. This is a trading strategy that a lot of algorithmic trading systems use. The idea is that it looks for the market to basically move in an orderly trend and where it runs away too quickly from that trend line, the algorithmic trading models will come in and short the stock or buy the stock if it's moving down too quickly and really ultimately sort of take the, the bumps out of the trading action. Now we can see that on an intraday day trading chart. We can also see that on a very long-term chart. If you look at you know, the, the weekly chart of the S&P 500, the upward trend is incredibly um, orderly. Aside from the correction that we had in uh, September into October, it's a very orderly trend. And really what that is, is these algorithmic trading models just taking all of the volatility out of the market by um, reverting price back to the mean or reverting price back to the trend. Now, the effect of that then is to not really chase stocks. If they run up real quick, in a couple of minutes or a couple of days or a couple of weeks, whatever the case may be, there's a very good chance that they will pull back to their upward trend line. Now, it doesn't always happen that way, but I just caution people from chasing stocks higher. When they have a quick spike up, realize that these algorithmic trading models will probably come in and take that stock back a little bit to get back to the trend line. All right, let's do our analysis for this week. Here's the chart that I spoke about, the very orderly upward trend in the S&P 500. It's a very narrow upward sloping channel. We broke down out of the channel at the start of October with that correction. We corrected the correction. We're back into the channel and really continue to have good upside potential. I do sense this week with the very narrow trading range and low volatility that we saw that uh, the market was, you know, the buyers are losing some of their enthusiasm. Now we are coming up to uh, the Thanksgiving weekend in the U.S. And so I think we're going to see a little bit of quiet here as we end the month of November. But certainly the upward trend is strong. The bulls are in control. So stay optimistic. The S&P, or pardon me, the uh, Russell 2000, which is the small cap index, also showed a little bit of indecisiveness this week. It's come up to a, a short-term line of resistance from those highs of uh, uh, September there, uh, late August, September. And we're just getting stuck there. I think that this market is continuing to get better. And we're starting to see a few more uh, stocks giving good opportunities for a trade off of that market. But until we really get that breakthrough to new highs, I don't think we should get too excited. I think what we're seeing right now is a lot of the charts that really got beat up over the last few months are stabilizing, they're improving, they're starting to build rising bottoms. And so they're sort of like seeds that have been planted, they're starting to sprout, and I think they'll bear some fruit for us in the months ahead. The uh, Toronto Stock Exchange is really underperforming the U.S. markets. If you were to strip out commodities, it would probably be very similar to what the U.S. markets are doing, but 35% of this index is uh, coming in the mining and energy sectors, and those sectors have been hurt by the strong U.S. dollar, the drop in gold prices, the drop in oil prices, and that really is why this chart looks uh, quite a bit uh, worse than the uh, weekly chart of the S&P 500. Now, keep in mind, this is a daily chart that you're looking at, so I wanted to sort of show how the market's trying to make a comeback and has done so for about six weeks, but it's still well below the highs where the U.S. markets are at new highs. So I think there's opportunity in the Canadian market, but you have to be pretty selective about what sectors you're trading. The TSX Venture has had, let's call it, two weeks of stability, but the big picture is still pretty ugly. Until we start to see breaks from rising bottoms on this market, I don't want to get too optimistic about it. It's being weighed down by those cheap commodity prices and real uh, overwhelming pessimism in the commodity sectors. Treasuries have been pulling back for maybe four weeks. They're coming back to the upward trend line. I think they're going to start to resume their upward trend in the next week or two, and that means interest rates should continue to cycle lower. So stick with that trade and um, you know, don't worry about interest rates making a big jump yet until we see a break of that green upward trend line on the chart there. 
I wouldn't get too worried about rising rates. U.S. dollar has moved to new highs and it's really flirting with the break of a very, very long-term downward trend line. So it seems like there's a shift going on right now, money moving back to the U.S., wanting to own U.S. equities, wanting to own U.S. assets because it's the best performing economy in the world, um, at least major economy. So uh, we're seeing the U.S. dollar probably a little overbought right now and I think that it's due for something of a pullback. You can see it's quite far above that green upward trend line. So it wouldn't surprise me if we see a pullback in the short term, but uh, it is certainly impressing me in terms of its ability to bring the buyers into it. Gold uh, has broken down below support, pretty oversold. We've talked about that in recent weeks. So it should make a little bit of a bounce back, um, but I don't know if it's a tradable one. I think you have to be uh, a day trader or a swing trader to take advantage of it. And Consider trading some of the ETFs that benefit from a rise in gold prices, the GDXJ, the NUGT, GDX, these are, uh, and then in Canada, the HDU, which is the gold ETF, uh, double correlated ETF. All of these will do well if there's a bounce back in the gold mining stocks, but it's only a trade at this point. You have to really look for a good chart pattern on a very short term chart, something like a uh, two minute, five minute, 13 minute, 15 minute, maybe 30 minute, but stretching it out much more than an hour and you start to really see still overwhelming pessimism. Oil market uh, to new lows this week really can't uh, catch a break way down below its downward trend line. So it's due for a bounce. It should bounce higher, but it's like trying to catch a falling knife here. Um, it should have bounced off of support last week. It tried and it failed. And so I think you have to continue to be cautious with the oil market. Watch it because there will be a trade eventually, but uh, look for breaks from rising bottoms on an intraday chart before you even consider buying any of these things. The, v the VIX, the VXX ETF, I think has found some support here and probably just is going to go sideways. Certainly the volatility in the VXX has diminished. And where I love trading it last month, it's kind of cooling off and it's not going to give you the same kind of follow through that it was giving us in the month of October and part of September. So I sort of would advise moving away from trading the VXX and the XIV and moving into trading individual stocks again, because that's where there's been some good action. So the outlook then, bullish on US stocks. I do see a little bit of a quieting in the US markets. Canadian stocks, neutral. Uh, it's really a tale of two markets in Canada. It's commodities versus everything else. Gold bearish, oil bearish, uh, overdue for a bounce, but really no good sign that one is coming. The U.S. markets continue to move to new highs, but the enthusiasm is diminishing. The Canadian markets are coming back up, but they're being dragged down by the commodity sectors. Gold and oil are due for a bounce, but have failed to make a sustained rally, so be cautious. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for November 14th, 2014. Have a great week in the market and trade well.